So I started my career as a, a bench scientist, and uh, uh, I was trained as a biochemist and an immunologist uh, after my postdoc. And, and as time had developed, and I worked in a, a couple different companies with different uh, indications and applications, starting with diagnostics and then research reagents, I ended up at uh, Kirkgaard and Perry Laboratories, or KPL, a Gaithersburg-based company that made reagents in the immunology field. And so while we were there, we kind of had an, an idea about how to pull together a group of technologies that were inside KPL and licensed in some additional technologies to build a core that created a lot of excitement for, for the company around the genomics explosion, which was going on in the late 1990s and early 2000. And so we had a, a core set of technologies which we thought was innovative enough to start another company and so that became the foundation for Capital Genomics. Uh, so we started Capital Genomics as a spin-out company from KPL in 2000, and probably there couldn't have been a worse time to start a company, I'd have to say, because uh, it was a very difficult funding environment. We were fortunate that we had the support of KPL at the time and were able to get the business off the ground and develop two very, very interesting technologies. One was a genomic discovery platform and the other was a gene immunization platform, particularly designed at making antibodies as tools. Even though the company had a uh, kind of limited resources, the idea behind that is still valid today because as you probably know, the antibody as a drug business is absolutely booming. And it seems like each new uh, antibody target that develops comes out as something that's uh, uh, instantly a, a, a power power drug in the biopharmaceutical industry. The other side of that, on the gene immunization side, while we were looking at it for tools, we were trying to find a way to really optimize how to take genetic information and turn it into these antibody tools, and how to get the immune system to effectively respond to that. Gene immunization is a really interesting concept. It dates back to my work when I was at Life Technologies in the early 90s, and uh, the work that was done there with uh, lipofectin, which is a very powerful product that's uh, uh, been an important product for life technologies in terms of getting nucleic acids inside cells and the cells make the proteins and you can measure different responses. A group of researchers at that point in time realized that you could actually just immunize with DNA and the host, so your own body, would take that DNA and convert it into the protein that was coded and you could make an immune response against that protein. So all of a sudden this idea went off, hey, if we could use that, we could solve a lot of the immunization hurdles against very difficult diseases like HIV at the time, uh, hepatitis C, which nobody knew what that was. So there was the, these series of very challenging diseases that were out there that had no good vaccine solution. So as capital genomics evolved, we actually uh, had to take a, a turn away from what was our primary idea and ended up buying a division of Thermo, which was Dynex Technologies, and got into an instrumentation business that was coupled to this genomic analysis. And uh, in 2004, we actually flipped that Dynex Technology and sold that to Magellan Bioservices. As we finished that, that business with Capital Genomics, the genetic immunization area and the vaccines was still very prominent and we had some advice from the outside that said vaccines were continuing to be important, particularly in the area of oncological vaccine. At that point in time, Tom August was an advisor to the company and I just happened to have a meeting with Tom and we started talking about how vaccines and particularly genetic vaccines could be very powerful and Tom suggested that I looked at his discovery, which was this LAMP technology. LAMP itself is a gene that's very highly conserved in nature. Every organism that has an immune system has LAMP. And so LAMP is something that sits inside these immune cells and in some way interacts with their processing with the part of the immune system that's responsible for teaching the rest of the immune cells about foreign particles. So if a bacteria comes in, it goes into this specialized compartment and some of those materials find their way to the outside of the cell and the other immune cells interact with it and say, oh, we should be looking for this. And maybe they make antibodies, maybe they make activated T cells to go out and kill those cells that have that protein. But, and so it's a very complex reaction. But actually, as it happens, uh, Tom discovered that he could attach any genetic sequence to LAMP 
and it would carry it into this compartment where stuff is being processed. So as soon as I saw this, I realized that Tom had made a tremendously important observation in the development of vaccines was that a, a fantastic way to access this compartment and this pathway in the immune system. So I became quite excited about it and we started talking about how we could create this company uh, out of Johns Hopkins that would essentially develop uh, the lamp technology for commercial development. Uh, Tom's laboratory, he called it the laboratory of immunomics. So we kind of put two and two together and that became the basis of immunomic therapeutics.